Hey there everybody. Uh, this video is intended for beginner competitors. Uh, those that are new to swivel, doubles, anything that you need to make your own music for for show skiing. Uh, as it has just recently come up that this is actually a skill and, and we need a little bit of instruction on it. And so right now this video is being done for the flaunt it and dub it competitions, but this would apply equally to Wisconsin State, any of the other regional tournaments, um, prepping for a national tournament, that kind of stuff. So uh, a couple of things I'm trying to do here. Uh, this is intended to be the cheapest, quickest, most efficient way that you can prep your music. By all means, if you know somebody who is good with IT, um, is a creator that uh, does video editing or perhaps is into digital music and remixing and stuff, they're going to do a way better job than these videos are. And if you have that kind of friend, tap them for a favor and go and ask them to help you with this because it'll make your life a lot easier. But as became apparent uh, throughout the 2023 season, and this is mid-2023 when this is being recorded, um, you know, it looks like some people need a little bit of help with that. And so um, this video is going to have two parts. There's the uh, short part and the longer part. Short part's about just converting formats and sending your stuff off. And then the longer part will be uh, kind of the entire process. So first things first, you need to get your music from some source. And I know that the bulk of the United States has moved to streaming services. That is not going to help you out. <laughs> okay. So streaming digital music, such as Spotify or Apple Music uh, or Amazon Prime streaming, that is not what you need to do here. You need to go buy your music from some high quality source. Now, somebody's going to say right away, can I, can I get just go rip it from YouTube? Well, you could. Um, that's borderline illegal. So I'll just throw that out there to you. And even if you do grab it, um, the problem is, is that the audio quality tends to be somewhat low and it will sound okay on your own equipment, but when it gets boosted up to a thousand watt plus system at a ski site, now you're in trouble. Um, and it tends to get fuzzy and distort. So spend the dollar or $2 and go and grab your songs from a high quality music source. So what are those? Um, primarily the two that come to my mind personally is either the iTunes store, and I know that's now buried behind Apple Music, but it's still there um, and isn't going away anytime soon. So either iTunes, the iTunes store, or go to the Apple, or uh, sorry, the Amazon Prime Music Store, where you can buy and own the digital tracks. That's what you want to do. You don't want to be the monthly streaming service. You want to literally do that and download that. All right. So this is the longer version of this video um, on how to do audio for your routines. And it's going to take a little bit longer dive into um, actually remixing a little bit with Audacity. And again, this is just scratching the surface, the very easiest way to do this, showing you how to extend a song out, you know, past five minutes for your routine. Um, by all means, there are a lot more sophisticated ways to do this and a lot more sophisticated remixing that can be done. But if this is your first time doing this or you're kind of new at it and you just need to get something ready, um, this should be a good guide. So you definitely need to get a program called Audacity. It is free um, for Macs or Windows. Uh, completely free, you go to Google and search for Audacity Download and get that program downloaded and installed on your computer. Um, again, doing this on a mobile device is, is very difficult to do. It's not impossible, but it's a lot harder. You really need to do this on a laptop or desktop computer. Um, I would not suggest a Chromebook either. Um, Windows or a Mac and Audacity again is free. Um, if you are a Mac user, I would make a suggestion if you look down at the bottom of the screen here for this program called Sound Studio. It costs you a few dollars uh, it is available directly on the Mac App Store. You don't need to go somewhere special to download or whatever. You can purchase it using your Apple ID. And if you're a Mac user, it's a great program. Um, cheap in cost, powerful in what it can do, but also um, powerful in its simplicity. And I have used it for years to uh, remix audio and stuff for various ski teams uh, and individual competitors as well. So that's only if you're on a Mac. I don't believe they make it for Windows, but again, Audacity, totally free and available on both platforms. So once uh, you have Audacity installed, 
You open that up and this looks identical on a Mac or Windows computer, it doesn't matter which one you're on. And we wanna get the program, or not the program, sorry, the song that you have purchased uh, or downloaded or wherever it came from into Audacity. And in the case that I have here, um, this song happened to come from a place called No Copyright Sounds, NCS. Uh, just a, you know, giving a little promo for them mainly because it's totally free and it's copyright free, meaning you're not gonna violate copyright doing it. Um, check out their website, No Copyright Sounds. Look it up on Google. Um, that's where this came from. It happens to be an M4A file and I'm gonna tell my computer to open that up with Audacity. So, opens up, looks like this. You don't need to know what all this gobbledygook means. Uh, it's it's a waveform, it's, it's the visual representation of the music. And as you can see, my music is only a little bit longer than two minutes and 30 seconds, maybe two minutes and 45 seconds. This song is short, and I need to get to five minutes. And a big a hint from me to you, you don't cut your music right at five minutes. Go a little bit over. So I always say have at least 10 seconds of extra music and then you're good. So I need to add to this to get myself out to the five minute part. You can loop the whole song. I'm not gonna go into the nuances of remixing and finding you know prominent downbeats and stuff like that. Um, I'm gonna give you a really just quick kind of basic down and dirty. Um, Listen to your song first. I've already done that with this one. I'm actually gonna grab from right about here and I'm gonna highlight this whole part. This works like a word processor, just like I'm highlighting a sentence on a word processor and I grab right to the end and I go up to edit, copy. And then I want to add tracks. So I go up to the tracks menu and I go to add new and I wanna add a new stereo track. And again, I'm expecting that you are on YouTube, you can pause and rewind here. Uh, so I am moving rather quickly, but you can always review this uh, easily. So I add the tracks, and what I want to do is place that song somewhere near the end here. I'm gonna go with about right here, and I'm gonna go edit, paste. And now I have the song down here. And then just to, you know, again, very basics, what I want to do is grab maybe the last couple seconds, and you can zoom in, by the way. Uh, you can zoom in and zoom out on this as much as you want. You have the little magnifying glasses right here up top to zoom in. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and I'm going to highlight about the last um, three or so seconds, two and a half, three seconds, somewhere in there, of the song, the top version. And I'm going to go up to Effect and fade, and I'm gonna to go to fade out. Okay, down on the bottom, I wanna do the opposite. I wanna grab about two and a half to three seconds of music. That's a little short, I'm gonna go just a little bit longer, more towards three seconds there. And I wanna do an effect, and I wanna do the reverse, I want to fade in. There we go. And now I'm gonna move this because I want them to line up, and I want them to overlap a little bit. And now I'm gonna take a listen. I'm hoping this is gonna come through on the video for you. Yeah, that'll work, no problem. All right. That is about all there is to it. I've now looped the song, have some fades, so it, it's a nice you know, dissolve from one to the other. And if I scroll out here, you notice, as I look at the actual end of my entire piece of music now, I'm longer than five minutes. And I'm right at about 5.10. If I was at 5.08, that's fine. But I'm looking good. I've got a, one piece of music long enough. This could have been two different songs. Um, that's always a possibility, too. You can put two together. Um, you know, and string one, you know, one song into a different song, but this is just the very basics to get you going. And now just like the short version of the video, I need to finish up. I go file export. I want to export. This as an MP3 file. Make sure you're at a higher bit rate. This is the one I recommend 220 to 260. Give it a name. Please name it, um, with your last name underscore first name, and then put down what it's for. This would be for strap doubles. 
Looks good. I know where I'm saving. It's going to my desktop. I got everything there. This will help out the audio crew at tournament by having your name um, right away at the beginning. So it alphabetizes. And then what is it for? Strap doubles, swivel, pair swivel, uh, all that stuff. If, you know, if you can put a little bit into the file name to help them out, they will appreciate that. And now click save. Um, it's going to say, hey, do you want to take this whole mix? Because you have all these multiple tracks and it's going to export it as a single audio file. Absolutely. That's what you want. Click OK. You don't need to do any of this meta tagging stuff. Not important for what you're doing. Click OK again. Give it a little bit to convert. My computer is really fast, um, so it might take a bit longer on your computer. And now look on the right hand side. I now have this audio file. It's an MP3 format, which pretty much all the tournament equipment can use and it's ready to send away. I'm done with Audacity. Um, you might wanna hit save so you can come back and make changes to your project later if uh, you're gonna do some, some edits or something maybe. Um, but otherwise I'm gonna quit and I'm gonna say no, I don't wanna change that. And now you need to get this to your tournament officials. How does that happen? There's a couple different ways folks and they should have sent you directions in an email or maybe on a PDF document of how to do that. Um, the most common, easiest way is via email. So you would come into email here and create a new email and uh, you know whatever address they give you um, right here. And then give it a subject, obviously, tell them who it's from, and then you just need to attach it. These files, MP3 files are relatively small, should send via email with no problem. So that's one way. The other way is potentially uh, an upload site. Uh, maybe a Dropbox, maybe it's a Google Drive or some other system they have set up, but they should send you those directions with a link. And so the example I'm gonna use here is uh, we're prepping getting ready for a big flaunt it and dub it competition with Naughty Girl. And we've set up a Dropbox. Um, I've actually been the one doing that and I have a Dropbox upload site and this was the link that we sent to all the competitors. Gives you a few directions and it basically says, hey, add your files right here and it's gonna upload. And so here's my file. I can literally just drag it in here. And when I'm ready, I click upload and away it goes. And it's doing its thing. It'll take a little bit of time, depending on your internet speed to upload. Um, Dropbox works very much, or sorry, uh, Google Drive works very much the same way. Or maybe they have a OneDrive uh, upload set up uh, with Microsoft 365. Any of those systems are great. And now my file is sent away. Um, you may want to follow up with an email just to double check, make sure they got it. But that is how you can loop a song and get it long enough for your routine and then send it off uh, to the people that need it. Good luck.